Now for some typical reason I'm rolling up on some hollows And had my back seat <laughs> My pimp lyrical tactics It's like a dose here for another mattress now I just be on the front porch with a torch ready to scorch two women peeping me cause frequently I'm gone In the zone they have a thought so freaking me keeping me company bumping me for the frequency I'm on They can see I'm a cool motherfucker kicking the pelly I with a kangaroo woman waves of fame Peanut butter complexion too silly possessions two fillies of fifty sockers some reapers and a razor blade Like a game of space cut the bullshit these days was made for me to rise like we days and pay Women freaking me greedy licking me doing body graffiti throwing their pennies up on the stage Are you up on the edge of players in the shot twist it and do a die you and I can relate if you rabbit on the shit we finna The style of flow is a vocal calico to show you what the mic I be speaking of Watch the words we can Go to my crib, no need to bring a mask and glock Turn out the past the block Getting more hot than the astronaut Sipping out the shot I ball cause I see all the rap a lot Let's keep partying in the classic spot Penny Henny for my crew and I ain't even broke up half a knot Keep on holding me while I roll it'll be We can smoke a ride and you can play with me to keep the passion hot Don't you know how the money flows? Hell yeah! Y'all don't know about that Midwest flow What's going on y'all? Welcome to the Mac Lessons Radio Show I'm your gracious host My name is Mr. King Flex Also known as That Nigga Also known as Tariq Nasheed Glad to have everybody tuning back into the show It's going to be a wonderful show this evening As all my shows are wonderful If I may pat myself on the back I'm chilling On this wonderful Thursday evening Got me some herbal tea And yes the tea is herbal Looking fly, smelling fly, being fly, trying to be like you players out there. We're going to take a lot of calls from listeners. And today's topic is going to be for the cats that are in relationships. Or people who have significant others. Men and women who have significant others. Because a lot of the game I lace people with is usually for single people. But there's a lot of game that people in relationships can learn too. So this game today is really going to be for people who are in relationships. Because you can learn game too. Today's topic is running out of things to say to your significant other or discuss with your significant other in relationships. That's a very big issue with people in relationships. And we're going to get on into that topic a little bit later on in the show. And I want to remind everybody that the Get Your Game Right Tour is starting next week out here in Los Angeles at the um, White Fire Theater, Thursday, October 23rd, 7.30. You can still get tickets at GetYourGameRightTour.com and Atlanta, Wednesday, October 29th at the Hilton Atlanta on Cortland Street. You can still get your tickets for that at GetYourGameRightTour.com. Let's, let's see who we got on the phone. Who's on the phone? Uh, this is Kimbo calling from Rhode Island. You calling from Rhode Island? Yeah. Okay, what's on your mind, player? Uh, it's that cute, uh, okay, you got to uh, Hold on, player. Hold on, player. You, you got to talk up. You got the sexy Barry White voice going on. You got to talk up, player. <laughs> no, I, was in, uh, I sent a message to the station. Wait, wait, player. You, 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 are, are you somewhere held hostage? Because you whispering like you're in danger. You all right, my nigga? <laughs> Talk up, player. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I sent you the message on uh, my experience about about uh, the situation. I uh, check my message. I can check this step and about physically. Okay, 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 okay. I, I remember your email. You got a, an email about a girl talking about physically assaulting you and all that. Now, why are you still dealing with this woman? Say that again. Okay, this young man, for my listeners, he sent me an email. He was talking about a woman he was dealing with was threatening to beat him up. Wasn't the girl talking about whooping your ass when she see you? Yeah, it's not even, like, scared. It's not even, like, like I'm scared, but the thing is that, like, what's this? Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a man of means. I don't, I, don't be, I, I don't be doing something. Like well, you just shouldn't. This is cut and, cut and dry. You shouldn't even be fucking with her anyway. If a woman threatens you, that goes to that, um, the last show I did about the seven levels of disrespect. Don't even mess with her. When they're talking about physically doing something to you, um, you know, what they have the police to back them up. That's why they do little slick shit like that. So she's just trying to figure out a way to get you locked up on some bullshit. So charge her to the game. Do not mess with her. All right. Thanks for the call, player. What's up? Who's calling? 
Hey, Tariq, what's up? It's Anton from Louisiana. What's going on, Ton? Hey, what's up, dog? What's on your mind? Thank you, big ups for all the advice and everything you've been doing for me, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm calling my topic right now. The topic is running out of the state of your mate. Yes, are you in a relationship right now? Yes, I am. All right, so how long have you been in a relationship with your significant other? Uh, I've been in a relationship now for about 30 days. Oh, shit. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of short, you know. It's kind of short, but I've hit it about five times already. Okay. And uh, she's cooperating pretty good, but I find myself, you know, kind of going out to the other female and kind of trying to bash myself out and get with them too, you know. So this isn't a serious relationship? Well, it is, but it isn't. I mean, you know, she's really cooperating and she's putting it down and everything, but I do find myself running out of things to say to her, you know. Oh, well, shit, y'all have only been together for 30 days and y'all, y'all ran out of things to talk about in 30 days? Well, yeah, kind of, because she's, see, she's from the South. And I'm from the north. Okay. I'm from New Jersey, New York area, and she's from the south, and she talks about, you know, pigs and shit, and I, I really don't. <laughs> Talk about pigs? <laughs> yeah, pigs and horses and farming and all kinds of shit like that, and I'm not really into that, but, you know, I just want to say to the players out there, you can find a dime if you really try Absol- out in the country. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know. All right, man, but thanks uh, for the call, player. What's up, man? Who's calling? Yo, this is Darrell out of Atlanta. What's up, Tariq? What's going on, Darrell? What's on your mind today, player? Nothing, man. Just on the top. What, did you, um, were you listening to Hot um, 107 this morning? I was on the radio out there this morning. Yeah, I listened to it, man. Yeah, I was on Rick on Ricky's show. Yeah, I'm coming out there to see you. Okay, cool. So what's on your mind, man? Well, you know, as far as I'm running out of stuff to say to you, me, that ain't a good look. That's true. But actually... Actually, there's a wealth of things to be able to impart to a good woman as far as direction and leadership and the overall vision of the relationship. And if you don't have anything to say, you need to cut her loose. Exactly. level of the Mac game. Exactly. That's the, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly, and I'm going to get deeper into that later on in the show. But thanks a lot, player. Okay. Anyway, but like I said, I'm going to get deeper in that later on in the show and give my take on that. Let me put on me some Mackin music real quick. Now, before I get in the game, and also, y'all, don't forget to check out MacLessons.com to get the Mac Lessons um, archives. You can get all the pay-per-view special shows. You can get the Art of Mackin ebook at MacLessons.com. Want to say uh, what's up to everybody out there in New York. I was on um, Hot 97 this morning in New York, and I was on Hot 107 in Atlanta on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. What's up, Taz, out there in Dallas? And I was on Big Boy Show yesterday. I didn't sleep in fucking days. I'm like, I'm, I'm hopped up on Red Bull. I feel like a fucking heroin addict right now, man. What's up, man? Who's calling? What's up? Big Smiley. Yes, what's up? Who's this? Going on, this is Manny calling from Boston. What's going on, Manny? What's on your mind, Pimp Ben? Uh, I got a question, man. I mean, um, you have to do a show about brothers who, I mean, who's not gifted in the in the in the look category, and how we can get females. Uh, I know that that we have to step our game up, but uh, it's like I, I really tried to, but. It's Females don't look past my physical appearance. No shit. What the hell do you look like? You you making it sound like you look like the hunchback of Notre Dame. What do you look like? I, I guess it's not good enough for these females out here because uh, uh I mean I, I just get overlooked. I mean I I, I had a girl at a, at a, at a time, but then she left me for some pretty boy looking Akon looking ass nigga. If if Akon is a pretty boy, where you from? You must be really fucked up. I, I I don't know what it is. I, I, I don't know that. How can I step my appearance up <laughs> as far as, as uh, this uh, nigga uh, said? A pretty boy like Akon. I'm like, well, it must be slim <laughs> pickings as far as dudes for the women out there in your goddamn city. The thing is, it's it's your swagger, homie. It's it's really your vibe and the 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 confidence level you have. Because look, there are women out here, man, who date. Hideous looking dudes, and again, and I'm not you know trying to knock no other dude, but Akon is not no pretty boy. The dude that she, your your girl, left you for probably had more confidence than you, and that's the thing that turned her on. 
You see, women respond to the man's swagger, the man's vibe. If you carry yourself like you deserve to be with fly women, women are going to step to you like that. I mean, look at Janet Jackson and Jermaine, Jermaine Dupri. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look at uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z. You dig? Jay-Z is not no fucking supermodel, but the fact that he got Beyonce, that has made Jay-Z a, a sex symbol now. You dig what I'm saying? So okay. it's all about your vibe, your swagger, man. That makes you attractive to women. Get off that I'm ugly. Fuck that. I've seen motherfuckers who look like some shit off Star Trek get dimes because they're vibing. They have that level of confidence. All right? So how, so how can I get that vibe and get that swagger? I, I don't. Like, oh, okay. I'm very plain, very squared person. Like, oh. I'm at like a nine to five. I ain't, I, I'm not... Like, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not hit through all that. No, man, what you have to do, you have to start looking at all the positive qualities in your life. See, right now, you're looking at all the negative things or the, the things that you perceive to be as negative. You're like, oh, I'm just a dude. I just have a nine to five. You know what I'm saying? I'm not no pretty boy. You know, I'm not making my little money. Woo, woo, woo. The thing is, man. Having a nine to five is a good thing. We're in a, re a recession right now. So there's a bunch of motherfuckers who ain't working at all. So you're at an advantage, a better advantage than other people. Um, the fact that um, you probably got your own house. You, you got your own house or an apartment? Uh, no, I'm on my way out. I'm trying to work my way out. Oh, you see, so you living with your parents? Yeah. Okay, how old are you? 22. Okay, uh, that's a little understandable, but... Um, if you stack your money up, you'll get your own spot in the time being, man. You just start getting at females who are a little more established. You want to get females who have their own spots right now. Because two motherfuckers living at home with their mom and dad, that's not the business. So right now, you need to focus on girls who have themselves together. Because girls that you're spitting at now, they sound like women who really don't have themselves together yet. So they want to look for a man who has himself together. And you're going to have yourself together. You're only 22 years old, man. You know, when you... You know, getting your mid twenties, late twenties, you're gonna get more established. You're gonna find a career. Your shit is gonna really upgrade. So you ain't got nothing to worry about. But don't just throw in the towel and be like, okay, fuck it. I'm I'm just not no dude who's gonna get no fly bitch ever. You're gonna upgrade. It's a natural progression. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. All right, player. I can't get up. this nigga said a pretty boy like Akon. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Akon looked like a burnt french fry <laughs> With chicken grease on it Oh my damn Anyway um, I was talking about some of the radio stuff that I've done I've, uh, Again I've done a whole bunch of radio stuff this week And um, when I'm down in Atlanta On the 29th I'm going to arrive there like on the 27th So we're going to do a lot of radio down there And um, there's some kind of modeling event That I'm going to judge on the 30th so i'm gonna keep you guys posted on that i'm gonna have you guys come out to that too when i'm down in atlanta we're gonna really rip atlanta up we're gonna have a ball down there and i know a lot of you guys been wanting me to come to new york i'm most likely going to come to new york in um december early december because we're going to release the art of gold digging book around december 5th i'm working to try to complete that book and um, we'll probably come to New York around the first part of December. And I'm doing a whole bunch of shit in New York in November. I think I'm doing the Tyra Banks show and all that. But I keep you guys posted. I'm just rattling off on my whole schedule right now. Okay, I'm going to get into this game in a minute. I want to talk about very quickly, very, very quickly. I don't want to get too political. The whole election thing right now. And right now with Barack Obama, there's a lot of racial baiting right now. And for my white listeners, if you have white family members and family and friends who are on the fence, really lace them with some game. What's going on right now, the Republicans are pandering to the secret sector of America. See, there's a whole section of America that a lot of people aren't hip to. I call it the dumb crystal meth sector the dumbass white folks in middle America. The dumb racist ass motherfuckers who are just blinded by racism and rhetoric. I'm going to just go ahead and say it. A lot of people are kind of dancing around it. The thing is, in America, 
well, you never see them on television that much. You rarely see them. But in America, there's a secret sector of dumbass white folks who are being scared shitless by the Republicans. That's all the media does and the Republicans do is scare these dumbass white folks. Now, again, most many white folks, they know the game. They know the whole race hustle and they kind of play past that. But they are these old school, hick ass, methed out, trailer park rednecks who fall for this shit hook, line and hook, line and sinker. And they're really doing a lot of race baiting right now. They're talking about, oh, Obama's a terrorist and he's linked up with terrorist organizations. He's a Muslim. And the shit is backfiring on the Republicans. Because all of these kooky, dumbass hicks are showing up at these rallies yelling out dumb shit and is really making the whole Republican game look fucked up as it should. We've all seen some of these news clippings of these people standing up talking about, I heard Obama's an Arab. He's a terrorist. I mean, it it backfired because that's what the Republicans wanted these people to think. They've been using the whole race bait technique since the 1600s. And I've talked about this really in depth on the Message to White America special show that I did. And I want you guys to go to MacLessons.com and order that now if you haven't heard it. Because I go real, real deep into that about how the race baiting started in the 1600s. Because in the 1600s, whites and blacks were here as indentured servants and they worked together. There was no racial animosity whatsoever between blacks and whites. But what happened is that blacks and whites, working class blacks and working class whites, would band together and start these rebellions to try to get better wages and try to get a bigger piece of the pie. I want you to Google something called Bacon's Rebellion. It's it's an event that happened around 1670-something, and that gives you an idea of the, the... type of rebellions that whites and blacks were engaged in together in this country to fight against the status quo. The status quo had to figure out a way to alleviate that shit because that would have been a problem. The biggest problem back then, the biggest fear for the elite or rich people was that not only would blacks slaves revolt, they were already afraid of that, but they were really afraid of black slaves revolting then joining forces with working class whites because that's what that was was what was already happening so they had to figure out a way to alleviate that so they came up with the great idea of racial class system they started categorizing everybody he's white he's black he's red he's yellow he's brown cuz white folks didn't consider themselves white. There was no such thing as white before the 1600s. There was no such thing as the brown man or the yellow man. And there is no such thing as the yellow man today. Asian people don't refer to themselves as yellow at all. Referring to an Asian person as yellow is an insult to them. That's some shit that the people over in the Americas came up with. I mean, the game gets deep and I don't want to get too deep into it now, but I'm just making the point how race baiting has been very significant in the divide and conquer of different cultures in our country in order for people on top to remain on top, to get the focus off them. Same thing in the 1600s. They started telling white folks, "Okay, look, you're white. And since you're white, we're going to give you special privileges. Black folks aren't going to get shit. So that immediately fucked up the common bond that black slaves and working class whites had that stopped that immediately and they do that now the economy is fucked up they done these republicans and these rich white ceos have raped the economy they done just took money out banks these white folks out here have lost their 401k plans. These white folks out here have lost their retirement funds. They are losing the, their money in the bank just disappeared. And they have the nerve to go to a goddamn rally talking about Obama's a terrorist. Y'all have to wake up. All my white friends, talk to your relatives. Talk to your family. 
and get them off that bullshit. Because like I said, man, in this country, the elite and the, the, the powers that be, they spend their time scaring middle class white people. And they keep middle class whites scared of everybody. That's their job. If you look at it, all they do is teach middle class whites to be afraid of everybody else who's not middle class and white. Even Europeans. They tell middle class whites, you better watch out for Mexicans because they'll take your job and they'll stab you. You better watch out for blacks because they'll rob you, rape you and kill you. You better watch out for anybody in the Middle East because they're terrorists, they're Al Qaeda, they're going to bomb you. You better watch out for the Chinese because they have bird flu. You better watch out for the Koreans because they have SARS. You better watch out for the Africans because they have AIDS. You better watch out for the British because they have mad cow disease. You better watch out for the French because they're arrogant. Y'all remember that? They... After 9-11, they were mad at the French. They were trying to get white Americans upset with the French. They were like, oh, the French, they're not our allies. We're not going to call French fries French fries anymore. We're going to call them freedom fries. So this election is very important. White folks, y'all got to get off that bullshit. All you swing states and independent white folks who are on that, I I won't vote for a black man. You would rather go to hell in a handbasket with a, a white Republican than vote for a black man that's going to really help this country it's t- too late for that shit just wake up and realize that you've been hustled and do what black folks do charge that shit to the game but I digress anyway y'all let's get into some game I know y'all saying nigga get into some game I want to learn how to get bitches let me get this call who's calling Hello? When people call up and don't say nothing, hang your ass up. All right, anyway, like I said, man, on today's show, we're going to talk about running out of things to say in relationships with your significant others. I've been getting um, a lot of phone calls and emails about this topic. Let me get this call. Who's calling? Hey, yo, it's Sam, man. What's going on, man? Where you calling from? Um, calling from Philly slash Delaware. Oh, there you go. So what's on your mind, player? Uh, I have a question. My question is, how important is it for Mac to put things in order? As how- far as first you get the money, you know what I mean? Then you get the respect, then you get the pussy. How important is it? Okay, repeat. How important is what now? To put things in order. Oh, okay, how, and to put things in order? Yeah, as far as money, respect, power, pussy. Okay, first of all, you got to establish respect. Respect first, because respect is the foundation. Because you can get money, but you might not get respect. You can either you can get pussy, and you won't get respect. So you got to get the respect first, because if the respect is there, everything else falls into place. Then you get the money. You, um, if you're with a, uh, a woman in a relationship, y'all figure out ways to get your hustle on first. And then after that's established, the sex is secondary. The sex is like the icing on the cake. And women can respect that even more because the average dude don't care about getting respect or they don't care about getting money. They just want to fuck, which makes them a trick, essence, in essence. So it's very important to get the respect and the money first, and then everything else will fall into place. That makes sense? All right, cool. Thanks, Tariq. All right, player. Okay, I'm not taking no calls right now. The phone lines are lighting up, but we're going to get into the game right now. So like I said, man, running out of things to say in relationships with your significant others. I know a lot of people, they get in relationships for a long time, even a short time. They get in relationships and they find themselves just staring at each other with a loss of words. They don't know what to say. They get bored with one another. And the relationship kind of fizzles out. And in many cases, the relationship will fizzle out, but they still stay together. And then they'll start looking for outside stimulation. The reason why a lot of relationships run out of dialogue, because a lot of people 
don't do shit within the relationship. You're just there looking at each other. In relationships, man, you have to look outwardly. If you look inwardly, you're just staring at each other. Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you're so cute. You're just whispering sweet nothings in each other's ear all the time. That's cool in the beginning, and it's it's fun. It's fun to be romantic and in in love and cupcaking and all that shit. But you kind of have to not do that all the time because the more you cupcake and if it's all hot and steamy in the beginning, that's going to fizzle out. So it needs to be drawn out. Sexual tension needs to be maintained. That's why I say you shouldn't be men fucking on your lady all the time. Like the caller who called up earlier, he was like, I done hit that pussy five times, maybe more than five. In 30 days, I just been tearing that pussy up. That shouldn't be the focal point of your relationship. If you're trying to maintain a long lasting relationship, you should let the, the, the sexual tension build up. That makes it more exciting when you just fucking every night. It gets played out after a while. It becomes a trick hole relationship. You dig what I'm saying? And the wife gets tired of that because the woman, the wife or the female or the, the, the lady of the house, she wants that sexual tension. Women like sexual tension. You know what I'm saying? They like the build up to it. If they know that you're just going to jump on her ass every night, nah, she gets kind of bored with that. Not all of them. I'm just talking generally because there's some women, you know, who are freaks like that. But you should always create some type of sexual tension. That's one thing. Also, man, when you're in relationships and you run out of things to talk about, that's because, like I said, you haven't done anything. That's why you have to create things to talk about. You have to do things with your, your mate. You have to do things with your significant other. You have to try new things. You need to travel. You have to literally create some shit to talk about. If you haven't done nothing, you ain't going to be able to talk about nothing. If all you motherfuckers do is sit up in the house and eat hamburgers and Doritos and, and watch Dancing with the Stars. What, what do you have to talk about if you just do the same shit day in and day out? That's why you should travel a lot. That's very important in a relationship. Going on vacations. As often as possible. Going to new restaurants, going to stage plays, going to art exhibits, just trying new shit with your significant other, learning new shit, growing, expanding your mind, expanding your culture, and that gives you stuff to talk about. Now, a lot of people might say, well, damn, you know, I'm in a relationship, me and my lady are cool, but I don't have no money to travel like that. And especially in this economy right now, but let's just forget about the economy right now, because let's just pretend that the economy is normal. Even when the economy was normal, a lot of you guys were still doing the same shit. You still were not traveling. You still weren't trying new shit or doing new things with your significant other. Thus not creating new things to talk about. And some people do have the money excuse like, damn, man, you know, we struggling right now. And I have to say this, man, two grown working people should not be struggling in a relationship, to be perfectly honest. If you are two grown people in a relationship and you both are working, you really shouldn't be struggling. The only exception is if you have some kind of medical issue that you had to pay for, which I know takes a lot of money. If there was a death in the family or some something of that nature that you had to, to finance. Or if you've been laid off or somebody's been laid off or, or you just got back on your feet. But if you are two people who've been working for a significant, significant amount of time, you shouldn't have any kind of financial issues. The problem is people have financial issues because they're not on the same page. If you're in a relationship with somebody, especially a, a serious long term relationship, you shouldn't have a division of finances because a lot of times it's like the dude, he has his account. The woman has her account. And y'all struggling because everybody's hoarding their own finances and not putting that shit together. 
as the man or even the woman because some women might be better than money than her dude but generally a dude if you're in a relationship you should be managing the finances truth be told if you're not managing the finances in the relationship really that's a problem And two people bringing in two incomes should not have any kind of financial difficulties. Especially if you're not living in California, New York, Miami, or a place like, um, who's high? Like Hawaii or something like that. But because most places in America, the cost of living is somewhat low. It's not that high. So you guys have to get on the same page. As far as the finances. And the caller called up and he, he made a very good point. Inadvertently talking about respect, money, sex. Because again, you have to establish the respect first. The respect is very important. You have to let the woman know as a man, and I'm talking to my men right now. You have to let the woman know that you are going to be the man of the relationship. You're going to be the leader in the relationship. You're going to be the head of the household in the relationship. And women... When you hear that, that don't mean that you're going to be controlled. That's not going to mean you're not going to have any power. That, not, that doesn't mean that you're going to be a slave. Because women take male leadership and translate it into some slave shit. Like, oh God, I'm losing my power. He's telling me what to do. I ain't nobody slave. You get on that bullshit. And that's not what it is. Having a man as the head of the household doesn't mean that you're going to be ass out. That's why you have to choose the right significant other. You wouldn't be with a guy or you should not be with a guy if you didn't feel like he was going to lead your household or lead the relationship properly. But it's up to the man to establish that respect early on. Secondly, the money. The money issue is very significant. You have to establish how money will be distributed. Now, guys, if you are the head of the household and you are managing the money, you have to manage it fairly. That's very important. That's with square relationships and hustle relationships. If your wife brings home the check and you put it in your account and you you put your wife on an allowance or you pay the bills or whatever, don't go fuck your money off at the strip clubs. Don't go trick your money off on your mistress. It's all about being fair and and earning the respect that you're supposed to have. And that goes out to my pimp friends too, the, my pimp buddies who who manage the money. Don't get the money and then you wearing fur and your chick has on shit from Forever 21. She should be just as tight as you. The money should be managed correctly. And when you establish that, everything else falls into place. Everything else is great. So the point is, if you're in a relationship, try new things. Create new things to talk about. Your relationships get boring and they fizzle out because you do the same mundane shit day in and day out. Men, you have to establish the leadership role in the relationship so the woman can just be the woman. She can just play her woman part. And you do the man shit. We take a couple of more calls before I bounce. Who's calling? Yo, what's up? This is Proof, man, from Cashville, Tennessee. What's going on, man? What's on your mind, player? Oh, nothing much, man. I'm, I'm uh, talking to this, this chick right at, uh, at the school I go to, right? In that, in that right? Okay. Um, I'm going to a week. No, I'm Two or three weeks now. You've been talking and, uh, to this girl for two or three weeks? About two or three weeks, yeah. yeah we you know, went, on, went on a couple of dates, you know, two or three dates. And um, and just like, you know, the reception, and she, I, it's like I'm talking to her, you know what I mean? But she still hung up on her last boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? Oh. But she's into me. She like, like, there's no question about that. I like her, you know, the vibe is real good. It's just like she continues to bring up stuff about the past nigga. Okay, you know, so... How, 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 Okay, that's a very good question. Now, you have you and this woman been intimate yet? Uh, yeah, we've been intimate. Okay, so you hit it. Yeah, I hit it. Okay, okay. Well, she needs to, if she wants to deal with you for a long period of time, she's going to have to be like, you're going to have to tell her to charge that, to, that dude to the game. Because tell her right now, you are a clean slate. 
Like if you deal with me, you know, don't bring any baggage. Look, I'm not bringing baggage to you. Don't bring any baggage to me because look, I've dealt with fucked up bitches too, but I'm not going to treat you um, according to how I've been dealing with other women. I'm going to treat you on a new slate. I'm a, a, it's a brand new day with you. So you step to me with the same shit. I don't want to hear about this bullshit you got going on with your last dude. If, if it's that important to you, you're going to keep bringing it up. Go back to him and bring closure to your shit. But if you want to yeah. fuck with me, let's move on and do this shit on some real shit. Right. What I think it is, my girlfriends, man, getting twenty eight out. You know what I'm saying? She's on, she on my space page, maybe have a blog talking about the DNA shit, the DNA shit and all that. Yeah, and if she... <laughs> And if she's one of those chicks that is so susceptible to peer pressure, just tell her, look, I'm about to drop your ass off back in front of your high school so you can go on back and, and, and bring closure to that because you ain't graduated yet. And I mean mentally. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and yeah. let her know that. Don't don't play no little high school games with her. This peer pressure is stuck on the boyfriend. Just tell her to woman up with her shit and step to you correctly on some grown woman shit. Okay, one more question, man. Go ahead. Uh, how, how the tour going? It's going great, man. Well, where you at? You in on where you at? Um, um, okay, you, you ought to come over to Atlanta um, um, in, in two weeks, man, to see me do what I do. Okay, okay. I'll try to make it down there. All right, for sure, man. Thanks for the call, player. Right, no problem. For sure. All right, y'all. But anyway, let me put on my Mac and music. But that's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. Let me get up out of here. Don't forget to check out MacLessons.com to get the Art of Mac and ebook. The Art of Gold Digging should be out around December 5th. You can still get tickets to the Get Your Game Right Tour. We're putting some new cities on the schedule. I'm waiting until after the election. After the election, we're going to hit up like Chicago, Miami, New York. We're going to hit it hard. Real hard. I'm going to take one last call, man. One last call. Who is this? I uh, appreciate it. What's up, what's up King? Like this Corey. What's up, Corey? Where you calling from, man? Oh, man, I'm calling from Oakland. Oh, shit, from the Bay. What's going on out there in the Bay, player? Oh, nothing much. I, I just emailed you on, uh, on my MySpace a couple of weeks ago. I told you I was in Vietnam. You were in Vietnam? What? No, remember I told you I was in Vietnam. I just got back. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you were yeah, in Vietnam. Yeah, man, it's real okay. out there, man. You should go check it out. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. You were saying that the, the, the females are kind of cooperative out there, right? Yeah, man. V- uh, Vietnam is cool, man. It's, uh, it's kind of like being on a different planet, but that's... The- they got some nice beaches and stuff out there, kind of like um, Tahiti and shit. Word, I would, I would yeah, never man, think that about, nice. I would never think that about Vietnam at all. I know it's a lot of stuff, man. They got, but it's it's real fly, man. They got, they got a lot of, you know, like um, a lot of the factories and shit out there, like Gucci and um, uh, Burberry. They got a lot of their factories out there, Adidas. So oh. a lot of people out there fly shit for real cheap. I'm telling you, man, you might want to check it I'm out. A, I'm gonna look into that, man. I'm, I'm gonna look into that move. Good looking out, man. Thanks for the call, player. Okay, Brian. Now, see, that goes into what I was talking about earlier, and that goes into the point I was saying about how the media scares people, especially white Americans, um, about other cultures and other countries. Now, when you think Vietnam, you think of the war. You think of Vietnam, you think of motherfuckers, you know, Asian people out there with guns and kidnapping people and prisoners of war. But there's a lot of fly shit out there, and I'm, according to the, the listener. And it's like that all around the world. When you think of Africa, you know, you see motherfuckers with bones and, and shit in their noses and a nigga with no teeth, with flies and an ashy ass stomach. And I've seen beautiful pictures of Africa over there and shit. You can't get the white folks up out of Africa. They got to run white folks up out of Africa. They make it seem like it's fucked up. But there's some beautiful parts of Africa over there. But anyway, I digress. But anyway, y'all, holla at you guys on the next show. Don't forget to check out GetYourGameRightTour.com MacLessons.com MacLessonsRadio.com I'm a holla My pimp lyrics are tactics It's like a dog's here to build a match And flex this Now we'll just be Now we'll just be Now we'll just be Now we'll just be Now we'll just be